On the right side of the screen, we're gonna have the RX 6700 XT from AMD. It's the made by AMD reference design running out of its out of the box settings. And we've got it up against on the left hand side of the screen, the RTX 3060 Ti. This is the Nvidia Founders Edition. Now, these two GPUs are pretty interesting to compare uh, because first of all, they were both in a popular price bracket. I mean, if you look at my GPU comparison videos, if you just sort my channel videos by popular, uh, you'll see that the 3060 Ti versus 6700 XT comparisons are, are near the top. These are getting hundreds of thousands of views. This was a big buying decision for a lot of people because the question really, it was really putting you to the question on what are you gonna value more? VRAM, because the 6700 XT came with 12 gigabytes of VRAM versus only eight gigabytes of VRAM on the 3060 Ti, but the 3060 Ti came with a better upscaler with DLSS and came with higher ray tracing performance. Uh, which is now gonna be really interesting as we take a look at Doom the Dark Ages in particular. Uh, and this is a game I've been testing out uh, just because it's a recent release, but it's also particularly interesting in that this is one of the very few games that is ray tracing mandatory. You can't play this game without ray tracing hardware and there's no way to fully disable ray tracing in this game. But that being said, it is also designed around console hardware, hitting uh, over six, at least a 60 FPS lock, I should say, on uh, consoles like uh, a PS5 or a Series X, which actually have AMD hardware, and the GPU inside is actually a bit less powerful than the 6700 XT. It's more like a 6700 non-XT, although there's no exact match. Um, so we're actually looking at, at uh, you know, hardware that's a bit more powerful than the um, console targets here. So this isn't a super heavy ray tracing workload. This is more realistic to what, you know, the gaming consoles can, can do. Now in the future, this game is planned, I think actually quite soon, uh, for a path tracing update, but we're te I'm testing it out right now at the end of May, uh, where there is no path tracing update at this time. So the ultra nightmare settings are as high as this goes, but that does not implement path tracing. So this is a pretty interesting look uh, where we can see how do these stack up in a ray tracing mandatory title, you know, five years after these GPUs came out, four or five, four and a half, something like that. I don't remember the exact release dates. In other words, which one is aging better, at least in this particular title? Now I'm planning a more dedicated, uh, big uh, comparison of just a bunch of big games in 2025 for these uh, GPUs. So stay tuned for the channel for a more comprehensive look at a wider variety of games. Also, it's important not to just test out max settings here. So I'm gonna be testing out uh, 1440p and 1080p, both at native resolution and using DLSS and FSR. I'll be using the balanced upscalers at 1440p and the quality upscaling at 1080p. And I'm gonna be also looking at medium graphic settings rather than just maximum graphic settings. So with that being said, I'm gonna ah, shrink down tiny and out of the way over here. And you can see the uh, average results and 1% lows, uh, the graphic settings and resolution, and then uh, we'll go ahead and see how they're stacking up here. So uh, it looks like at 1440p, Ultra Nightmare, so maximum currently available in the game. Uh, settings, the 3060 Ti is 15% faster, but it's only averaging 39 FPS versus 34. So I think my actual conclusion here is neither of these GPUs is able to play this game at maximum graphic settings. I mean, I would argue this is technically playable, but these aren't the frame rates that a PC gamer is going to want to play Doom on. I mean, these uh, the consoles even run this at 60 FPS and don't offer a 30 FPS mode to my knowledge. Like this game is designed to be played at at least 60 FPS. Now, if we use DLSS and FSR upscaling, we are now hitting around 60 FPS. 60 FPS on the 3060 Ti, but 57 on the 6700 XT. Now here, I'm gonna pause for a second and, and I think it's important to talk about what we're seeing here uh, because this is not an apples to apples test. When we were running at 1440p native resolution, both were using a native, uh, you know, native resolution using the game's TAA. We are now seeing one GPU using the DLSS upscaler at the balanced mode and the other one using the FSR upscaler at the balanced mode. These upscalers render the game at a lower internal rendering resolution and then try to output an image uh, that looks like the native uh, image, but they do this differently and generally DLSS looks better. 
Uh, so if you see things, in, uh, um, especially in motion, oftentimes the FSR image is gonna be a little more ghosty, a little more fizzling happen or happening around the edges. Uh, but also I believe this game has DLSS4 transformer model in, inside of it. I'm using what's built into the game without the override, but as, as far as I can tell, I think this is the newer model. Uh, which is a bit slower. So you can see the 3060 Ti's lead has diminished a bit, but it still has a lead and it's getting, um, I, I would say, better image quality. Although I will say in my side-by-sides here, it's not one of the more dramatic wins that I've seen. Uh, uh, you can see differences certainly in things like the tree branches and stuff like that, uh, but it's, um, at least in this particular scene, FSR isn't doing a terrible job. There's certainly games where I find it to, to look noticeably worse. But now we're back to native resolution at medium settings. Because a lot of people buying the 6700 XT were like, well, I'm just not going to use upscaling or ray tracing. And again, this is an interesting game to test because we can't turn off the ray tracing. And even if I go down to the medium settings, native resolution at 1440p, I don't think we're at satisfactory frame rates. We're at 43 and 39. Um, not an amazing experience. So now we kick on the uh, DLSS and FSR to the balance setting, where again, now frame rates go up. In fact, they're quite nice at 69 FPS average. And actually both GPUs are exactly tied here, which is kind of interesting. But again, I would not consider this a tie because I do think the image quality is a little bit better on the left-hand side of the screen. Remember that YouTube compression is going to be killing a lot of those fine detail differences. Uh, but I have looked at this in person uh, and kind of tested it out a bit. Uh, FSR does get a bit of ghosting and breakup that, that DLSS mostly has solved in this game. Um, what if we're playing on a 1080p screen though? Well, at Ultra Nightmare settings, the 3060 Ti is hitting 57 FPS, uh, whereas the 6700 XT is hitting 50. That gives a 14% lead to the 3060 Ti. I would say that both are playable here on a variable refresh rate display. This is potentially how you would choose to play the game. Although I really do think I would turn something down, either the resolution or some of the graphic settings. This is looking at using quality level upscaling. Now performance, I would say, is completely acceptable on both graphics cards. We're at 75 versus 71 FPS. It's a 6% lead for the 3060 Ti in performance, but an additional lead, I would say, once again, in image quality. Like I said, not one of the worst FSR implementations I've ever seen, but I do think that we are getting a better image on the left-hand side of the screen. So a little better performance and better image quality, I do think it's a better experience on the 3060 Ti. At 1080p medium settings, uh, we're now getting 64 and 58 FPS respectively, so the 3060 Ti is 10% ahead. Both GPUs are getting around 60 FPS, so if you just want to play at a native 1080p resolution, uh, this is probably the best way to do it on both GPUs. Um, that being said, by turning down to the medium settings, you get some performance back. Now you could also use some upscaling to get even more performance. And again, I think a lot of people wanna play Doom games at closer to 80 or 90 FPS on a mouse and keyboard. And you can do that using quality level upscaling on the medium settings. Now the 3060 Ti's lead drops to 1%. We're essentially getting the same performance now. So the real difference is in image quality. So again, if we take a look at certain things, like let me actually jump back here. Uh, like one thing I've noticed in playing, we'll see if it shows up in this particular footage, is like when things sway back and forth here, I think I see a little more like ghosting on them, uh, on, on the, uh, ah, went off the screen, ah, <laughs> um, on the AMD side of the screen with FSR, uh, a little more trails. Um, anyway, like I said, not the worst uh, FSR implementation I've seen, which is good to see. Also, XESS is available in this game and might actually be a better choice for AMD users, but I'm sticking to the DLSS and FSR kind of branding here for, for the choices. Uh, but there we have it. So that's how they stack up at the tests I've ran in this game. I think it's an interesting test scenario. Um, to see how these two GPUs are hanging, uh, are, are hanging on right now. But again, this is not necessarily a capture of a typical 2025 release uh, where uh, I'm gonna be doing some other testing. I'd like to do an updated video, again, like how I did back in you know, 2023. Uh, how is the 3060 Ti versus 6700 XT holding up in 2023? Well, how about we'll do a 2025 version. Doom the Dark Ages is just gonna be one of the games that I'll be testing. And in this game, I would say the 3060 Ti does seem like it's holding up better. It's got a bit more ray tracing performance and the upscaling, especially if you're playing at 1440p, really kind 
kind of seems to be somewhat mandatory uh, if you want to be over 60 FPS in this game. So this is a game where I think I would say the win goes to the 3060 Ti, but the 6700 XT is certainly giving you a playable experience in this game. Uh, it's interesting to see that the ray tracing isn't a massive advantage for the 3060 Ti here. Again, because I think this is a game where the, um, where the overall uh, ray tracing levels are designed more around the console experience, right? So if games are going RT mandatory, they've got to run on consoles because that's usually the um, uh, the main, uh, you know, design platform, you know. So that that's interesting here, right? We haven't got the path tracing update, and I have a feeling that it's just going to crush the 3060 Ti anyway, so I don't think that's going to be particularly relevant. So this was an interesting test, but like I said, uh, most games are still not RT mandatory, so I'll be looking at some other games in the near future. Uh, I'm uh, going to put these head-to-head -head in the biggest releases of 2025. We'll look at things like Monster Hunter Wilds, Oblivion Remastered. Um, we'll be looking at Claire Obscure Expedition 33. Um, I'm, you know, other ones are slipping my mind. I, I think I picked eight of the biggest releases of 2025, and I'll be testing it at these settings, 1080p and 1440p at native resolution, as well as using upscaling uh, at both maximum settings as well as medium settings uh, to get an idea of how these GPUs are holding up. Did one age better than the other, or is it more of a case-by-case -case basis where Doom the Dark Ages? I do think the 3060 Ti is offering a little bit better experience here. But are there other games where that VRAM capacity is going to be the big deciding point? Uh, we'll have to see it, like I said, in a kind of a series of upcoming videos, so stay tuned to the channel. If you're interested, I'll be looking at a bunch of other GPUs in these same tests as well. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.